Hi everyone, this is Dr. Bill with Easy to Pass NCLEX, easytopassnclex.com. So today's session, we're going to be talking about gastroesophageal reflux disease, short form or also known as GERD. So what is GERD? GERD is ideally um, the sphincter, you know, in the GI system, basically the lower esophageal sphincter connecting the stomach is either weak or not strong enough to hold flu um, foods or fluids back. So in this case, there's regurgitation. The food or the substances comes back, you know, um, passing the um, sphincter. So mainly what it means is the sphincter is loose and food doesn't stay back in the stomach. Everything comes back up, which is known as regurgitation. So it's also called as GERD, gastroesophageal reflux diseases. So what are some risk factors or contributing factors that causes um, GERD or predisposes somebody um, to GERD? It can be obesity, smoking, heavy drinking, and also foods that contain um, substances that reduces the um, pressure in the stomach or throws the pressure of the stomach and the sphincters balance off. And then also obstructive sleep apnea can also increase the risk factor for um, GERD. Sometimes ingestion of heavy or large meals, like if you binge eat, that can also affect the sphincter's um, ability to um, close tightly. So what are some manifestations of GERD? People with GERD, they usually present with dyspepsia, um, heartburn, ideally, regurgitation, which is the food coming back up, which is the um, reflux or the regurgitation. Um, they may have some eructation, some flatulence. They have a lot of gas. Um, they cough. Sometimes they have hoarseness, you know, especially with the um, stomach acid irritating the um, throat and the mucus lining. Um, they may have some water brash, um, dysphagia also, or dysphagia. And then also sometimes um, bad breath from all the stomach um, acids. So what are some nursing interventions for someone who um, is diagnosed or may be presenting with GERD or gastroesophageal reflux? They include limiting foods that increases the stomach's um, ability to hold the sphincter in place or any foods that increases or throws the balance of the pressure off which includes chocolate, um, coffee or caffeine, ideally, um, soda, fried foods, um, and a lot of fatty foods as well. You also want to teach the client to um, eat small frequent meals. So they have to avoid eating binge meals. So eat small frequent meals at least four to six times you know, per day, which is preferable over eating large meals. They have to also eat anytime three hours away from bedtime. So if they go to bed at, let's say 9 p.m., they have to eat no later than 6 p.m. That gives that three hour window for the client to have the food settle before they go um, lay down. They also must eat slowly and chew slowly without rushing um, the foods um, in. Smoking cessation, alcohol cessation, or practice moderation. Um, encourage also the client to maintain proper oral, um, proper oral hygiene. Basically, clean the um, oral and the mucous membranes, you know, properly. Medications that a client may be prescribed include antihistamines, um, such as Pepsid. Um, they may be ordered some proton pump inhibitors, such as um, pantoprazole or protonics. All the medications that ends with the um the Zoles, the Z O L E S. So these are some of the medications that a client may be prescribed if all um other interventions are not effective. Teach the client also if they're going to bed, they must elevate the head of the bed and avoid laying flat because once they sit up, it helps the food also um settle versus laying flat. It causes um flat you know um surface and then it can you know help or stimulate the food from regurgitating so that's all in a nutshell for GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease let me know if you have any questions by reaching out to the social media handles thank you